So welcome to this uh, Anchor 4.0 webinar series from the Partnership for the Organization of Innovation and New Technologies, or commonly known as 4.0. This morning, the question that our three very special guests will try to answer is how do multinational digital firms affect uh, local innovation ecosystems in Canada? So let me introduce our three speakers for today's event, two of which are speaking to us from Calgary. Uh, so it's a bit early for you. Um, so Tazia Kushbu holds a master's in economics from UBC and is currently a PhD candidate in the Department of Economics at the University of Calgary. Her research interests include innovation and labor economics. Nice mix. Uh, she's currently working with um, uh, Dr. Alexander Wally to understand how multinational digital firms affect firm performance and worker pay in the Canadian local ecosystem. Um, Alex Wally is an associate professor of economics at the Haskane School of Business at the University of Calgary. He also serves as a lab economist at the Creative Destruction Lab, um, the Rockies um, section, I guess. And he's a research fellow with the uh, Westman Center of Real Estate Studies. He also holds a PhD in economics from the University of Maryland College Park. And his research interests are urban economics, labor economics, innovation, and productivity. And finally, Hu Zhu Liu is a principal researcher at the Economic Analysis Division of Statistics Canada. His primary research interests include labor market dynamics, entrepreneurship and firm dynamics, and new technologies and skills. He's published articles in peer-reviewed journals such as uh, you know, European Economic Review, etc. Uh, and he's got a PhD in economics from uh, the University of Western Ontario. And I understand, Alex, that you want to say a few words before Tazia speaks. So without further ado, um, we're eager to hear you. So the floor is yours. Yeah, Catherine, thank you so much. This is uh, really exciting to be here. We're talking about uh, the work we've been doing. Um, and this is part of the 4.0. A project overall. So 4.0 is a you know, very exciting a collaboration with lots of researchers across across the country in lots of different domains using qualitative quantitative methods. Um, you know, and one of the things that's I think really exciting about 4.0 is the use of new data sets and really new ways to measure things. So you know, a challenge we're having in Canada and also around the world is research is getting harder. You know, research productivity is declining over time, and so it's a huge problem because this is how we improve our standard of living. This is how we create new jobs. It's, it's so important for that, and so we've got to look at new ways to do things. Um, and part of the way to assess those, those new ways and, and new technologies is to get to get better data and to measure them um, in new ways. And so the project today, uh, which Tazi will discuss and Huju will, will share his thoughts on, is really an uh, attempt to do that with a thinking about really about AI technologies. A complementary piece of AI technologies is about kind of data, the ability to firms to have data capacity, use data, and have that in their workflow. And how, do, how does this change workers' jobs? Uh, what kind of jobs does this create? How does this change workers' earnings? These are all, you know, really big questions. But we don't really have uh, great evidence on a lot of these questions. Most of the evidence we have is about kind of uh, automation technologies, which really affect uh, more lower skilled workers. And so trying to think about the, these technologies that may be different, differently uh, affecting workers at the higher part of the skill distribution is something that we don't really know. David Otter recently talked about the AI uncertainty. There's incredible uncertainty about what AI is going to do to the labor market. Um, and so we're hoping to sort of contribute a, a first pass and a first a first glance into, into to what book would be happening We're in partnership with Statistics Canada. So Stats Canada has been a great partner. They're making available to us a matched employer employee data set, which we're linking together with a new data set that covers data storage capacity. So um, it's exciting to be to be doing this, and we're definitely in the work in progress stage. So any you know, comments or reactions will be will be super helpful. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tazia, who will lead us through the the project. Thank you, Alex. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Yeah. It's in presentation mode, right? Cool. Okay, so thank you for having us here and giving us the opportunity to speak about our project. So today we're going to discuss how multinational digital firms affect local ecosystems. We're mostly interested in what happens to firms in the local labor market and what happens to workers' outcomes. So, oh, yeah. So, new 
But digital technologies are extremely vital for firms as these enable them to improve efficiency through process automation to use data to generate customer insights and then to cater to individual customer needs and wants, which ultimately helps them to serve newer markets and improve their productivity and profitability. However, in a survey conducted in 2022 in Canada, we see that only 22% of firms are planning to adopt newer technologies. So these firms are mainly in sectors such as information and cultural industries, professional, scientific, and technical services, finance and insurance, and so on. So the vast majority think that they don't want to upgrade digitally, while a sizable one-fifth think that adopting newer technologies is not even irrelevant to them. So these are mostly firms in the traditional sectors, such as construction, transportation, and hotel industry, agriculture, and real estate. So when asked why they don't think they should upgrade digitally, over 60% of the firms said that they don't think digital technologies are relevant to them. However, uses of artificial intelligence is expanding in many of the sectors. For instance, if you look at the construction industry, uh, firms there can benefit from risk, miti uh, risk mitigation solutions, project planning, and building information modeling. We, we, we do know that driverless vehicles are going to be a possibility in the near future. Digital farming solutions are enabling vertical farming in Singapore and smart home technology embedded with AI can actually help guests have a comfortable stay suited to their needs in uh, hotels. ChatGPT and other technologies such as Notion AI are enabling people to have access to customized information and content. So what are the challenges that these businesses face when they adopt newer technologies? Uh, the most common response across firms surveyed in Canada is that they face challenges in hiring digital workers. Data on skill requirements and skill shortages across industries um, also back up such a response. As you can see in the lower chart bar here, skill shortages are higher for jobs that require more digital technologies. So this begs the question how technological upgrading is affecting outcomes for workers with different skill sets in the Canadian labor market. Our research is attempts to answer uh, this question by using the case of multinationals operating in Canada. In particular, we want to know how digital technology upgrading by multinational firms affects employment and wages of workers with different skills and specializations in the local labor market. We're also interested in understanding how multinationals decision to upgrade digitally affects uh, local Canadian firms. While we, we focus on multinationals, will become more clear as we discuss the estimation strategy. So, for the motivation, uh, as uh, multinational firms increase their use of digital technology, they may compete with local firms for employing skilled workers to complement increased digitalization. So in that case, local firms would need to pay higher wages to attract digital workers, which will lead to an increase in the cost of adopting such technologies. Consequently, local firms would be less likely to ad adopt digital technologies. On the other hand, um, large multinational firms often invest heavily for training digital workers. As such, when these firms decide to increase their stock of technologies, the supply of digital workers in the local labor market is likely to increase, which will lead to a fall in the wages that the local firms pay. Consequently, as local firms can now afford more of these 
digital workers, these firms would tend to become more digitally intensive. And we want to test which of these two different predictions will hold up for the Canadian context. So to discuss the estimation strategy, let's uh, pick two different firms. So one of these firms will upgrade its technology while the other firm won't. Uh, we are interested in finding how technological upgrading impacts firm productivity, employment, and worker pay. So one way to do that would be to compare um, the outcomes between these two firms. However, it's not that simple to identify the effect of digital upgrading. It's because the first firm might have been able to upgrade because it was a more productive, profitable firm with better resources and also had better digital workers compared to the second firm. So what I'm trying to say is that firm productivity, employment, and worker pay may be interlinked with a level of digital technology at the firm, which means that it is, it's difficult to figure out whether productivity drives a technological upgrading or technological upgrading is driving productivity. Uh, we're interested in the latter relationship because we want to see what happens to firm and worker outcomes when firms upgrade. So this is precisely where data on multinational firms will play a very big role. So to isolate the effect of digital technologies, um, we will need to find some sort of exogenous variation. So we will need to find this other variable or an instrument that will change the, uh, that will have an effect on how for firms which are affiliates of the multinationals work in, uh, working in Canada are basically going to upgrade their technologies. And as they do so, what happens to the outcomes for firms and workers? That's how uh, we're going to identify the effect. So to answer our question uh, using the estimating strategy described, we will be using three uh, sets of data which will be linked together for the years 2011 to 2018. So these data are uh, the Aberdeen technology data, the pieces data, which gives uh, post secondary information uh, on the workers and the Canadian employer employee dynamics database or commonly, which is known as seed. So the Aberdeen surveys uh, business locations or sites that are likely to have future uh, ID purchases. Uh, respondents to the interviews are ID professionals who have have the knowledge about the technology present in their location and trained research assistants complete the interviews every month to keep the data up to date. So this is a huge data set that covers all industries and firms of all sizes spanning over 2011 to 2018. Um, so we have access to a very detailed granular data at the business establishment level. And uh, these technology measures are comparable across countries, which will enable a valid comparison. So for the record, we have about 690,000 uh, business sites, which translate into 652,000 uh, firms in the Canadian data set. And for the US data set, we have uh, about 7 million business sites and uh, which kind of translate to about uh, 4.5 million firms in the US data set. So for the PCS data, we will be looking at uh, detailed information on enrollments and graduates of uh, Canadian po public post-secondary institutions. So we have information on the field of study, which gives us the first major and the second major of the students. 
we have information on the uh, program type. So we will be able to know whether the student is an undergrad major or a PhD or a master's student or is uh, enrolled in a uh, college. We have information on the credentials. So whether uh, the program uh, that, the, that, the, that the student is enrolled in will uh, culminate in a certificate or a degree or a diploma. We have information on registration status, so we know whether the student is a full-time or a part-time student. We, we also know the year of enrollment and the year of graduation, as, as well as the gender of the student. So the seed data is where it gets really interesting. We have linked employer-employee data, so we can actually track who works where and for how many years and how uh, the workers are, transi are transitioning from one firm to another over a period of time. So for, uh, for, for the period of our study, this would be from 2011 to 2018, but the data is available since uh, 2001. So here, uh, like the C data would provide us with a lot of information on the uh, earnings of the workers. We also get to know uh, a lot of information about the firms, whether the firm is um, an exporting firm or an importing firm, whether the firm is uh, having uh, profits or not. So we have information on their tax variables. We have information on how many people they're employing. And it's it's extremely detailed and I guess uh, who would be able to tell us more about it. So let us now move on in, into the data that we have about Aberdeen. Since the seed and pieces data can only be accessed through research data centers, it's highly uh, confidential data, so it's not open to the public. So let's start by taking a deeper look at the Aberdeen data that we have at hand. So I have divided the sample of firms in Aberdeen into three types. Um, the first is um, all U.S. firms that own affiliate firms in Canada. So let's call those U.S. multinational headquarters. The second type is all firms that are affiliates of the first category. So these are the affiliates of U.S. multinationals operating in Canada. And the third is Canadian local firms. Uh, these can be uh, firms that uh, operate inside Canada and they're owned by Canadians. Uh, I'm picking data for only one year here for visual simplicity. So here I'm showing the distribution of firms in our 2017 Aberdeen data by employment size. So here, small enterprises are comprised of firms that employ 1 to 99 employees. Medium enterprises employ 100 to 499 employees. And large enterprises employ 500 plus employees. So here we can see that uh, U.S. Uh, multinationals typically have very large enterprises. So for them, you, you have 61% uh, of U.S. multinational uh, headquarters are uh, basically large enterprises. And for the U.S. multinational affiliates in Canada, we see that about 62% are small enterprises. And in the Canadian local firm universe, we just see that 96% are typically large firms. So these firms employ more than uh, 500 employees. So we also have access to revenues earned at the business establishment level in the Aberdeen data. Here I've aggregated the revenue across business establishments to get the enterprise level revenue for 2017. And then I have looked at the average revenue across enterprises in each category. So the numbers reported are in millions of Canadian dollars. Obviously, large enterprises make the most money, followed by medium and then small enterprises. 
large enterprises that US multinational headquarters uh, make um, an average of $21 billion, while those that are Canadian local firms are making around $2.5 billion. Affiliates are uh, that are large enterprises are about $1.5 uh, billion worth of revenue. Um, among the small enterprises, we see that Canadian local firms make the least amount of money, a mere $3.75 million on an average. So next, let's take a look at the tech intensity of the Aberdeen firms by employment size. So by tech intensity, I mean, how much technology does the firm employ per worker? I could have used absolute values of the technologies, but using tech in intensity gives a sense of the relationship between technology employed and workers employed at the firm. Um, I'm going to pick two types of technologies for this presentation, mainly uh, data storage and laptops. Here we're looking at data storage intensity measured in terabytes of data storage capacity per employee. So we see that U.S. multinationals, um, uh, uh, the headquarters are the most data storage intensive, followed by their affiliates in Canada, and then Canadian local firms. So smaller enterprises that are U.S. multinationals have 28.21 terabytes of data storage per worker compared to 14. Uh, terabytes per worker for affiliates that are small enterprises. So small enterprises uh, across multinational headquarters, um, the affiliates and local firms tend to exhibit higher data storage intensity, followed by medium and then large firms. So this suggests that firms, uh, as firms are increasing their employment, they do not necessarily proportionally increase how much technology they uh, employ at the firm level. So in this slide, we're looking at a similar figure that looks at tech, in uh, tech intensity in terms of number of laptops per worker. So for US multinational headquarters, uh, small enterprises employ more than two workers per laptop. Medium uh, enterprises employ three plus workers for each laptop and large enterprises employ about four workers per laptop. Once again, we see similar trends as observed in the previous slide. However, we find that for Canadian local firms, laptop intensity is higher for large enterprises than for medium enterprises. So next we're focusing So next we're focusing on firms operating in Canada only. So now we're going to look at um, Canadian uh, local firms and uh, multinational affiliates operating in Canada. Uh, we have picked up the top Canadian sectors uh, which come from the North American Industry Classification System or NAICS codes based on tech intensity. So we start with top sectors based on data storage capacity per worker. So for um, US multinational affiliates, we obtain the average data storage intensity across firms within each sector defined by uh, the NAICS code and then we pick the top sectors based on this average. Uh, we did the same for the Canadian local firms. So we see here that uh, professional, scientific, and technical services employ the most data storage per employee, followed by utilities and wholesale trade. So just to give you an idea of what type of firms you can find in each sector, um, 
professional scientific and technical services include uh, scientific research and the development services, uh, architectural engineering services, and accounting, tax preparation, bookkeeping, and payroll services, legal services, and so on. If you uh, uh, look at the utilities sector, you're going to find electric power generation, transmission, and distribution firms, natural gas distribution firms, and water and sewage systems. So, um, now in terms of tech intensity, it, it, of, uh, tech intensity by number of um, laptops per worker employed, uh, we see that uh, educational services exceed professional and scientific uh, and technical services. The education sector includes training schools and trade schools, apart from elementary, secondary schools, colleges, and universities. Uh, considering the education sector, we see that among U.S. multinational affiliates, enterprises employ fewer than two workers per laptop, while Canadian local firms employ two workers per laptop. For those who are thinking about how come public administration <laughs> crops up here among multinational affiliates and why, I ha why they have high tech intensity, I looked up this code. Obviously, this sector includes activities by different levels of government, such as federal, provincial, and territorial uh, governments. But this subsector also includes establishments of um, foreign governments in Canada, primarily engaged in uh, government service activities, such as like uh, consular, diplomatic, and uh, legation services. So uh, the Aberdeen data tracks the same firms over time. So it uh, let us now like look at the trends in tech intensity. We're using data from 2011 to 2018. We have three figures here based on the size of the firms. Um, each in each figure, I have plotted the average data storage capacity per worker for. U.S. multinational headquarters in red, the affiliates in Canada in orange, and the Canadian local firms in gold. Um, in the case of small and medium enterprises, we see that uh, affiliates and local firms track U.S. multinational headquarters closely until 2015. And then on, the U.S. multinational headquarters have substantially higher data storage per worker every year. This rising trend for headquarters is more pronounced for um, small enterprises than for medium enterprises. However, we see that even though the multinational headquarters have higher data storage intensity over time compared to affiliates and Canadian local firms, um, the difference between these three types of firms is considerably small. So, moving on to uh, laptops per employee. Uh, here on the other hand, which is we're looking at a more diffused technology such as laptops, and we see slightly different patterns. So let's start off here with large enterprises. We see that Canadian local firms have higher number of laptops per worker every year, followed uh, by affiliates and then the US multinational headquarters. For uh, small and medium enterprises, um, we see that until 2014, affiliates have higher intensities since 2011, followed by local firms, and then the multinational headquarters. However, after 2015, multinational headquarters rise in laptop intensity, followed by local firms, and then affiliates among small enterprises. Uh, while uh, among medium enterprises, we see multinational headquarters have a rising trend, followed by affiliates and local firms. Uh, overall, we can see that for newer technologies such as data storage, multinational headquarters are always leading the trends, while for more diffused technologies such as laptops, uh, affiliates and local firms 
can be leading. So now uh, one of our goals is to understand how technology shocks to firms can impact labor market outcomes as, such as wages in Canada. So we're trying to gauge this kind of a relationship here. Uh, in this scatter plot, we're trying to see if there's a relationship between data storage intensity and wages at the province level. Uh, so on the vertical axis, we have average number of terabytes per employee for the representative enterprise. Uh, within each province for the year 2017. So this comes from the averaging data. And on the horizontal axis, we have average full-time hourly wage paid in uh, 2017 at the province level. So this data comes from a jobs and vacancies survey um, that was uh, conducted in 2017. Uh, overall, we see a positive association between data storage intensity and average wage at the province level for this year. Now, moving on to um, laptops per employee. Uh, this scatter plot here uh, examines the same relationship, except that now we're considering number of laptops per employee instead of data storage intensity which is a more diffuse form of technology. Uh, we have the same average hourly uh, wage data as before for 2017. Uh, we, if we ignore this, the relatively smaller provinces, we do see a positive association between number of laptops for employee and hourly wage. Overall, uh, we can say that on average, higher tech in intensity is associated with higher hourly wage at least at the province level. So now our uh, identification is based on the premise that multinational headquarters decision to upgrade digitally leads to affiliates upgrading as well. So if this holds, then we will exploit the variation in the multinational affiliates technological upgrading caused by the headquarters decision to identify the impact on firm and labor market outcomes in Canada. So our preliminary results here show that, yes, multinational affiliates do exhibit increases in technological upgrading when their headquarters upgrade. These results are based uh, purely on the, on the averaging data set. So uh, here I have a snapshot of the first stage results. Here we see that um, we have looked at the descriptive stats in the previous slides at the enterprise level, but here for, for this slide, uh, since Aberdeen has data at the business establishment level, this helps us to distinguish the main headquarters site for the multinational firm from the other sites, which could be the branches, the divisional headquarters, and so on, within the same country, which is U.S. So this enables us to identify what happens to affiliate firms when we consider the increase in data storage capacity just at the main headquarters site, which is shown in the first column. And, uh, and we can compare it to um, like what happens when all sites belonging to the multinational in its home country, US, uh, gets an upgrade in digital technology, which is shown in the second column. So the outcome variable for both columns is the mean storage across sites for the enterprise uh, that, that are affiliates of the U.S. multinationals. And we have used a log log specification here. This means that as a U.S. multinational main headquarters sites double their data storage, their affiliates will increase their data storage capacity by uh, around 14%. And when uh, US uh, sites across US, uh, uh, US sites of uh, multinational firms across um, like all uh, enterprises, like so uh, basically when a US multinational enterprise increases its data storage capacity across all sites within the US, 
uh, uh, let's say by 100 percent, then uh, local, uh, then uh, affiliate firms inside Canada increase their uh, mean storage capacity by 30 percent. So in this re regression, we're controlling for uh, firm and year fixed effects, and we're um, uh, clustering standard errors at the firm level. So just to wrap it up, to reiterate the contribution of our study, this is the first study that uses directly observed measures of newer digital technology, such as data storage capacity for multinationals, affiliates, and local firms. And this data is comparable for the US and Canada. Um, we use these measures to identify what happens uh, to workers and firms in the Canadian local ecosystem. And we will be tracking how workers exposed to digitalization at the affiliates move to other firms in the local labor market. And this will help to identify uh, how technological upgrading in multinationals uh, may lead to indirect effects on digital intensity, employment, and productivity, as well as uh, worker earnings in other firms. And the pieces data uh, will be very crucial because the fact that we have linked up firm and technology data with workers post secondary schooling information gives us the opportunity to understand how digital upgrading will affect workers with different skills and specializations. Thank you very much and I'm uh, open to questions that you may have. Yeah, Tazia, thanks so much. That was that was super a great overview of the project. Um, maybe we, if there's any questions from the audience, we can go ahead and let Tazia take those right now. Um, if if not, then we could go to Huju, Huju's uh, reaction. So just to uh, see if anyone would like to ask Tazia anything, any kind of uh, you know any any open ended question you have. And this is very much work in progress. Um, there's a lot of different ideas running around there. So if there's any anything you'd like to share, feel free to to let us know. Sure. Uh, I guess Catherine has a question. I have a, I have a question. Go I'll, ahead. I'll take my, uh, <laughs> I'll use my, my chair position. Um, I was wondering, uh, you know, in, in the data you presented, did you, or, or are you able to disentangle the providers of, you know, cloud services from the other firms? Because it would appear, for example, the the you know the IBM uh, you know Azure systems are very much um, in your multinational headquarters in the U.S. and basically they will have a huge amount of 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 terabytes just because they're providing the the service. I'm just wondering whether you're you're able to disentangle the firms that are the big providers from those who are um users who are developing the systems for for themselves because it's always a, a question of do i install all these services in-house because i you know data protection is hugely important for me or do i use the the cloud services and you know sometimes these clouds are going to be in the us so certain industries will be very careful in not putting their sensitive data in in cloud services in the us because because of the Patriot Act and you know there's there's some problems. So I'm 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 just wondering whether you're able to disentangle that or whether that's something that uh, could be uh, interesting to look at. That would be really interesting to look at actually. And we, we do have information on the names of the firms. So we can kind of identify the firms by their names. So I think that would be possible to kind of identify who are these big uh, data companies, such as like Amazon uh, Web Services and Google. Yeah, that should be uh, feasible to do. Yes. Because that would be interesting to have either, you know, in your stats to start with, yeah. but, uh, you know, a dummy variable somewhere that at least identifies some of these some of these players. Because it might explain why you have some uh, coefficients that are, you know, relatively high in. Uh, so I think you go from, you know, point thirteen or, and 
point uh, when you have the uh, the log bean yeah, uh, charge across one, U.S. enterprise? Yeah, so it's, it goes from 13% uh, to 30%, but that probably happens because we're, uh, we're, when you increase the average data capacity across all the sites that you have w uh, within the country, I think I think that's uh, uh, I mean that kind of pushes up the whole number because uh, if if that's the case then you're more likely to uh, increase data capacity in in uh, Canadian firms as well or uh, compared to whether if you just you know increase your data capacity in just the main headquarter uh, that might not be uh, like uh, representative. Mm -hmm. for like uh, affiliate firms. I think that's the reason why uh, we have a pretty large number when it, when it uh, comes to the mean across mm -hmm. all sites. Did you also check, um, you know, in, instead of using the mean, using the median, or even using a Herfindahl index, because you might have only one part of the company that has lots and lots of data storage and they have data highways between all the different establishments. Um, so you might have a very skewed distribution as opposed to, to, to the mean. Um, I mean, these are just, you know, suggestions of yeah. uh, things you could, uh, you could explore um, for that. And this is, if I understand, this is the, this is the first stage result. I mean, is this, yes. is this the, is this a two SLS you did or is, uh, what do you mean by okay, first stage here? heading in that direction where we'll have a uh, two sls in future so uh, our outcome variables are going to come from the seed and the uh, pieces data but this is just the first stage that uh, we have conducted using just the aberdeen data so uh, we haven't really tried any other measures except for me uh, at this point but are, are you suggesting that using uh, the maximum value would be a good idea. Well, check what uh, what you get in terms. I mean, I mean, you, you could even have some, you know, quantile, you know, by by quartile or or separate. Because I'm just thinking that it's the you're probably losing some um, uh, some information mm -hmm. by just taking the average, uh, because it's probably very skewed uh, the the distribution across all the sites, and I presume also that you have some, uh, you know, dummy variables for 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 either provinces or, or or industry or. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, we have like the comment, exact address. Why are the salaries so high in Alberta? <laughs> so yeah, like. We, we we kind of have the exact address of the firms and the, uh, at the site level. So we can identify which firms are where in which province or which city even. So it's quite granular. And uh, of course we have uh, access to the uh, sector codes at the six digit level, which is the most granular level. Yeah. But they, they're, you know, these, these fixed effects are in your regressions. Uh, we have uh, for the regressions here. We have just used the uh, form fixed effects and year fixed effects. Yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I won't, I won't take all the floor. So there's probably many more questions. Thank you, Catherine. I mean, why why is the salary so high in Alberta compared to the others? I mean, it's quite extraordinary if you look at your graph. Yeah, oil, oil and gas is a very productive sector and it pays really well. So I think that's part of the story. And what kind of data do they store? Uh, that I don't know. This is all this is all kind of province level um, stuff. But I think the utilities sector we found to be pretty high intense uh, yeah. data. Mm. And utilities is also like pipelines. Pipelines are, are kind of like utilities as well. Ah, so yes, yes, mm -hmm. indeed, indeed. Okay. Uh, logistics, transportation, those are fairly data intensive sectors. Okay. Yeah, sorry, Tazzy, I don't mean to jump on. You go ahead. You go ahead. Mm.
you know, that's quite interesting. Hmm. And could you do that graph, uh, you know, the storage intensity with, uh, you know, you know your, your sectors at the same time with, you know, 3D? That could be interesting to, to okay. look. Sorry, I'm just uh, taking notes. Oh, this is going to be recorded. We'll send you the we'll send oh, you the okay. recording if, if if you want if you miss some of the sure. questions. Who do I want? I don't want to take too much time. Okay. So maybe yeah, I I'm eager to hear you and. Uh... No, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, thank you, Tazia. I think this is great presentation. Presentation is very interesting. Uh, you know, project results so far. Um, I think this is really demonstrate. Uh, um, a great partnership between Statscan and the 4.0 um, partner, um, you know, in the sense that the Statscan data is combined with uh, external data. We try to look at answer uh, important question uh, like this one. Um, I have just uh, you know a couple of observation from the from the presentation. One is when you show um, you know the firm side distribution uh, in the Aberdeen data and among the clean and local firm. Like it's over 90% they're large firm, which is kind of a surprise to me, because if you look at the stat can or you know just the, the representative the data we already we, we you know we seen every day, it's large firm which is basically you know less than 10%, right? It's most of small firm. So I guess this is Aberdeen data is like highly skilled to those firm who uh, adopt IT, um, you know, purchase IT or adopt technology. Uh, is that right? Uh, yes, because okay. they kind of use this data to inform purchase decisions of uh, uh, IT across firms. So it's okay. it, it it should be geared toward those kind of firms. Yes, you're right. Okay. So it's already a selection there, like by just using this, you know, data. I, I think maybe in the in the second stage uh, when we try to, um, you know, uh, answer from a random uh, firm point of view, then probably the selection had to be uh, taken into account. Um, this another question is, um, I think I remember when you list um, um, a top industry um, by um, the data storage and then the laptop use, I think uh, I'm surprised that I didn't see the information industry there. Uh, I assume, I presume is you know, 51 it's a, a information industry where this IT sector service, um, where it's located. So it should be have uh, much higher. Was there for laptops actually? Oh, so, yeah. But it's not in the storage, right? No, but not for storage. Mm -hmm. That's that's. Um, information uh, that's was the third largest for laptops per employee. Yes. Yeah, but I assume that's pretty provide like the, you know Amazon. Um, no, that's not related to the Catherine's question. Like Amazon Web Service, I presume they belong to. So I'm not sure how the that's another question. How the next code is uh, is coded in the in the in the Aberdeen data? It's um, it's based on the dominant um, activity within the the enterprise. Like the, you know in StatScan, we have if the enterprise has multiple activity. Then the next code is chosen by using the, the dominant activity. So in in stat candy, that Amazon might be listed at retail wholesale, not under the, the information or IT okay. service. Um, so I'm not sure how Aberdeen data is coded there next. Um, but uh, if Amazon service web service is the information provider, um, I assume that's going to be um, you know the, the 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 data storage by employee will be quite a high. Maybe, uh, you know, you look at average, right? So maybe one firm dominate them, but if you look at the average, maybe it says it's dragging down the, the, the average storage. Um, uh, I'm not sure how they assign the next codes in uh, Aberdeen, but uh, they, they do tend to like vary over the years sometimes for the same firm. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I think it's very interesting. So I'm really looking forward to the next stage where um, the static data join with the, the Aberdeen data to um, um, to show some more interesting result. 
Thank you. So, Thank uh, you. Uh, as of now, we have the data linked up when we're working on our reduced form right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or on our side, there's also some development. Uh, you know, we 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 know that um, one of the biggest um, gap in the stat candidate is we don't have, you know, um, very good data in terms of technology adoption and also the the scale of the worker, right? Um, I think one of the slides you show that uh, one of the hurdle why the firm don't adopt technology is because they don't have the, the skilled worker. Um, so something we try to uh, fill, in, fill in that data gap is we link the census to the seed and then we try to bring the uh, census information such as at education level um, and occupation to the, uh, to the seed so we can have, um, you know, a firm level information of the uh, skill um, at firm level. Um, so, so far, we impute education for each firm in the seed, um, like, you know, university above, um, high school, uh, and then uh, in the middle. Um, and occupation is, you know, we're working on, still working on occupation because uh, we can only add in the higher level, but once we go into to detailed occupation, you know, the predictive power is becoming uh, weaker. Um, but, you know, we're making some progress. We try to fill, fill in that data gap. Um, so um, in the future, there's more uh, information can be useful, uh, available for uh, for answer to this type of question. Yeah, so we, we kind of have linked up the census data in the uh, RDC with our, um, so like the census 2016 data is there and based on that we looked at the uh, job uh, classification, the NOCs, I guess the knock codes yeah. for mm -hmm. the different uh, occupations and based on that we're, we have inferred, uh, I personally haven't done the work myself, it was somebody else involved who like do it so I can't really run you through the process, but we have inferred like the skills measure per uh, SIP codes, which are uh, your uh, classification of inst uh, instruction programs. So we're kind of using that to, uh, since uh, our information on the majors is there already, we're kind of linking that up with uh, the skills that different uh, majors may have. So that's another, uh, you know, way of uh, looking at how technology might affect people with different skills that we're trying to explore in the RDC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. If no, I no, add no. your comments, Huju, sorry to cut you. Um, uh, in the survey of advanced technology 2022 that should be ready this June or July, there is a specific question on what prevents you from adopting and I think lack of employee training or is one of the questions yeah. as an obstacle and employees resistance to change also. But as, as you mentioned, you know, firms will not adopt because they don't have their, their employees are not trained. So it could be interesting to look at for the subsample that has responded to SAT 2022 or even SAT 2014, if the question is there, whether the firms had the skills or whether it was um, you know, preventing them from adopting. Um, because there's also, I think, difficulty to recruit qualified staff. Um, and in terms of uh, employees, I think that's, uh, you know, I'm just scanning through the questionnaire. I think that's it. And you probably have, you know, th these three questions re regarding employee. That could be interesting to, to present as a, um, a comparison with uh, the, you know, the, the skills data that you have. Because it's probably not just a question of um, uh, skills and edu or occupation and education, which you mentioned, who comes from the census. Uh, yeah. If we're going to look at these uh, at random subsample and compare the firms who have responded to SAT 2022, that gives an indication of whether it's 
the training, the lack, the, the, the resistance to change or the difficulty to recruit because we're in a, you know, labor shortage at the moment. Um, but I, you, you use 2017 as Delta, is that correct? Um, uh, as, yeah. for, for the, um, like in the earlier slides, I've used uh, business. Okay, but after that, you use the more recent data, 2022, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've, no. I've mentioned the years in the brackets so that you don't get confused, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's uh, right. I mean, we do have few survey, um, right? Yeah. As you know, survey the med technology and survey um, uh, the uh, the business, uh, the innovation, the business strategy. So they, they do mention this question on the technology adoption and the skill. Um, but you know, it's it just when you survey linked to the uh, the main data, it will be um, you know the number of position will be will not cover all the the firm, right? Just a sample, random sample. Of course, we can answer some question. Um, um, but it's still um, um, more information for the much more firm will be desirable. Um, we, uh, yeah, we do uh, propose a few projects to link those survey to the seed, right? So we can um, using those sample to look at, um, you know, why the firm don't dock technology, what's the impact on the, um, uh, what's the impact of the firm dock technology on the firm performance on the, on the labor market, on, on the worker side. And so on and so forth. Um, yeah, and also there's I think a new survey on the uh, connect by StatCam. Um, it's asking a skill shortage at firm level. Uh, it's called employer survey of employer survey of skill. Um, I think it just released last fall. Um, there's this asking um, the for each firm particular question on what type of skill is, 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 is needed and then um, why it's lacking and then um, you know why um, what can be improved uh, those type of question uh, I can send maybe send the link um, afterwards or I can find now um, Uh, so yeah, I mean we are making progress to fill in those data gap, and then hopefully in the future, we're in a better position to answer this question. Well, I think we're I'm running interested. Out of time. I've just put the uh, no, I've, I've just put the link to the, the oh, okay. SAT 2020. Oh, that's super. To. It's in right. the chat, but it was interesting. So yeah, go awesome. ahead, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, I'm just going to thank everybody for all the, the comments and feedback. I mean, it's super, super valuable to get your insights and knowledge about data, knowledge about methods and things that are happening to, to take that feedback on board. So it's, uh, it's been really helpful for us. And Tazia, thanks for an excellent presentation. Yeah, well done. Super interesting. I and mean, you raise when you ha when you raise so many questions, it's always a good, <laughs> a good sign. So as, as I mentioned, you know, we're recording this. So we're you're, we're going to make the the recording available and you can watch it if you have missed something from the questions and i hope we we, we didn't say too many stupid things in, in our questions that you probably you know, looked under the stone and said ah, no not not an avenue so so i'll, I'll thank everyone who um was uh, online with us uh, today and um we have a next one coming up soon so it's going to be announced uh, very soon and uh, thank you, Alex. And you're not in Calgary, you're in London, right? Yeah, I'm in London, I'm getting ready for dinner. I'm getting hungry over here, so. Uh, okay, so here. Uh, well, have a nice dinner. It's gonna be lunchtime here for us and it's coffee time for Tazia. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank, thank you, you all. Thank you, and Catherine. Thank you, Bye. Thank you.